Hello, this is Stephen from ShortSeasonGarden.com. If you have a green thumb, love fresh veggies, and live in a cold climate area like I do here in Zone 3 of Atlantic Canada, you will love growing microgreens indoors in the wintertime. Microgreens, unlike sprouts which are grown in water and often are eaten with the seed still attached, are planted in soil or a soilless mix of some kind. Basically, microgreens are tiny plants of most any vegetable seed that are typically grown indoors and the grow lights at any time of the year, but especially in winter. Common choices are kale, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, cauliflower, carrots, lettuce, radish. The list is endless. You can even buy special microgreen mixes. After moistening and leveling the planting medium, you sow the seeds very thickly and put them in a warm spot to germinate, just as you would any other seeds that you are starting indoors. Once the seedlings are up, put them under grow lights. Ideally, microgreens are harvested just about the time they start growing their first true leaves. The tiny seeds you plant are packed with all the nutrients and antioxidants meant to develop a large plant system complete with roots, flowers, and fruit, so the microgreens you eat are bursting with nutrition. Simple as they are to grow, however, there are certain mistakes you want to avoid. Mistake number one, using a container that is too deep. You will be harvesting your microgreens very short, so containers will need to be filled to the very top. That will be an unnecessary waste of soil if you use deep containers. You can buy specialized microgreen trays with or without bottom watering holes, or save your own deli trays, but make sure they are shallow. Mistake number two, going cheap on the potting medium. Use a good quality seed starting mix, not a cheap heavy garden soil or topsoil. Especially with tiny seeds, you will not get good results with poor quality mix. Mistake number three, using treated seed. It's one thing to have some fungicide on a seed that is going to grow into a large plant over two or three months in your garden and you are just going to eat the fruit that is produced. It's quite another when you plan to eat the whole plant in the infancy stage. I know it's tempting to use those leftover pea and bean seeds from last summer, but if they're treated, don't. Mistake number four, not pre-soaking large seeds. Don't try to use larger seeds without pre-soaking them first. The tiny seeds can germinate quite rapidly without a long soak as long as the planting medium is kept moist and they are covered and placed in a nice warm spot like the top of your refrigerator. But large seeds will be a bitter disappointment. So soak your large seeds for several hours before planting. The planting process is more messy but the results is more satisfactory. Mistake number five, using awkward tray sizes for bottom watering. Bottom watering is ideal both for avoiding damp off and to keep from damaging the tender young plants, but think ahead how you plan to accomplish this. Disaster can occur when two or three inches of water start sloshing around in the container. If you want to bottom water, make sure that you have a container large enough for immersing your planting tray. Mistake number six, allowing the planting medium to dry out. While you don't want to overwater and cause the seeds to rot, it's important that the growing mix be kept moist. If you're not set up to bottom water, either mist the greens frequently with a spray bottle or carefully pour water from a small container, taking care not to damage the tender plants. Mistake number seven, letting the greens grow too long. Microgreens are best harvested when the first cotyledons have turned a nice green. After the true leaves appear, you can still enjoy your microgreens, but they will have lost that first delicious tenderness of a new microgreen. If you have enjoyed this video on microgreens, please give it a thumbs up. 
Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell. And please check out www.shortseasongarden.com for more cold climate gardening ideas.